Just saying the word Christmas generates all kinds of images and memories. Maybe you think of gently falling snow, sipping hot chocolate around a fire, or carolers at the front door. Whatever it is, we can't deny that most of us today associate Christmas with gift giving. Now, culture looks to Kris Kringle or Santa Claus for the roots of such traditions, but gift giving goes back to the very first Christmas. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter two, verses one and two, it reads, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. Magi simply means wise men. These men were likely skilled in medicine, philosophy, and natural sciences, as well as superstitious practices such as astrology and interpreting dreams. Perhaps the Magi were aware of ancient Jewish prophecies asking everywhere, where's the king? Scripture tells us when they found the Christ child, they worshiped him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is believed to be symbolic of Christ's kingly role, foreshadowing his ultimate rule. The frankincense was symbolic of his priestly role as incense was used in worship and myrrh was a spice used in embalming, which, although they had no idea, would have looked forward to a sacrificial death. Clearly, they believed that this little child lying helplessly before them was special, a king someone with supernatural origins who deserved to be worshipped, even though they had little knowledge of the one true God. They were seeking. For answers? Maybe. For hope? Perhaps. For God? Well, isn't that who we're all seeking for in the end? Now, the Magi brought truly valuable gifts, but the irony is that these great gifts are nothing compared to the gift they themselves could receive, the gift of a restored relationship with God. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 12 invites us, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. At Christmas, the greatest gift is the one we can receive. The Messiah was born, he lived, and he died on a cross with purpose and for our sins. And we're invited to trust Him and receive the gift of forgiveness of sins, a relationship with the eternal God, and life for our souls, eternal life. And so we give because we have received. We give our time, our energy, our resources. I see families giving to the devastation in Haiti students volunteering at a ministry to youth at risk in Moose Jaw, alumni using their time and resources to create a space on campus where students can connect in community. This Christmas, be generous and give. And because Jesus gave himself for you, give yourself to the Savior who rescued you. On behalf of all of us here at Brockcrest, I want to wish you a meaningful and Merry Christmas.